Okay guys, I finally made it back out here to do some more work on this uh, other Gatton CNC build. Uh, I apologize once again, you know, I know it's been a long time since I put out a video. I've been kind of stuck on, you know, did the first six videos. Uh, the last one was where I was putting on the rails and getting those mounted. And then I just got really busy with a bunch of orders for the CNC kits. So I was running this other machine pretty much every day. Uh, cutting kits and of course with that running I can't get out here and shoot video so taking the day off from doing any of the, any of the kit work today and I'm going to try to uh, get a little video here showing how to assembly this cantry. Um, this is kind of the steps I like to take. Uh, you know you could do it different doesn't mean you have to do it this way. I personally think this is probably the best way. Uh, but what I do is I put the, uh, you know, the sub-assembly of each gantry upright and get it put on the rails and then I can check to see if I have this perpendicular to the table. And once I have that perpendicular, then I do the other side and then I'm ready to move forward with mounting the, the different pieces for the gantry. And another thing I like to do here, if you'll notice, I like to go ahead and assemble this all together. So I've got this front gantry piece, I've got the inside piece that goes, uh, you know, gets glued to the inside bottom part of this. And I go ahead and drill and mount my rail so I get everything nice and straight. Uh, and then I'm ready to uh, put the front and the back rail on. And then I've got my two pieces, the top and the bottom, I've got those cut and those will be ready to go on too. But before you just start slapping stuff on here and screwing it in, I like to build the whole uh, gantry assembly as, you know, just dry fit. You, you can see here I've got lots of clamps laying on the table here. So I'm gonna clamp this thing together, nudge it back and forth to get everything centered perfectly, get it, you know, exactly the way I want. And then I'll secure the clamps, make sure everything's really snug and it's not gonna move. And then I can put the, the the whole gantry together and start screwing it in permanently. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to try to get this gantry done in this video. Uh, I appreciate y'all being patient with me and let's get started and see what I can get done. Okay, I've got the two, the front and the back on. I don't have the top and the bottom stuck in there yet, but I just kind of wanted to show you the process I do. Uh, like I said, I made sure that the uprights were perpendicular to the table. So I've kind of got these clamped a little bit, squeezed against this uh, upright here. And what I did is I put the first one on, the front one, and then I checked to see what distance I needed uh, on each side when I measure from this surface here to this outside edge. And mine is right at three inches. So, you know, I put it on, kind of left the clamp a little loose, kind of was able to tap it back and forth until I got that one exactly three inches on each side so that I know that this front rail is centered. Next I took my big carpenter square here and I went ahead and kind of set this other one on and, and again clamped it loosely where I could move it and then just held this on here and then was able to pull this back until I get it so that I know they're flush this way and then of course when I come over here and check this in they are flush as well. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure you do is to make sure that you've got everything, this surface here is exactly perpendicular to your tabletop. And mine is looking really good, so I'm happy with that. Uh, next, I can probably put a few more clamps on here to make sure none of this stuff moves. And then I will show you how I put the uh, bottom piece in. Okay, I got the uh, bottom piece in. I've still got a few more screws to uh, put in here in the front. Um, and you might have noticed when I had this off, I've got these blocks already glued on here. You can cut those blocks to the size and you know hold one of these up here and then know that it's going to be flush to the top of this. It just gives something for that top piece to kind of rest on. So once you have that in, when I, I can take that bottom piece and just kind of wedge it in here and I've got a clamp right here in the center to kind of squeeze it together 
and then I just took a, a hammer and lightly tapped it up till it bottomed out and it's flush with these uh, other pieces. Um, and you have to remember because this is doubled up uh, with two pieces of plywood, at least here on the bottom, on the top it's not, there's only three quarter right here, but down here where you put that other piece that rides right behind here, you make sure you use a screw long enough to go through the two pieces of plywood and you know securely hold the settlement. So I think these are, uh, I believe these are two, maybe two and a half inches, I see. Yeah, these are uh, two and a half inch screws that I'm using here on the lower part. And again, as you're putting this together, you can kind of feel as you uh, start putting this thing together, you can start feeling it get stronger and stronger as you box it in. Let's see, it looks like I missed one right here. Okay, but as you're doing this, you want to periodically keep checking to make sure that you're still perpendicular, nothing's moved. When you look on the ends here, you shouldn't see any daylight between the edge of your upright and uh, the edge of your, uh, your rail supports here. They should be nice and tight against here. Uh, you know, the other thing, like I said, you check perpendicularity there. You also want to check it back here on the back side as well. And if, all, if you're doing everything right, yep, still got a good... Uh, Got a good fit there. Another thing I would suggest uh, when you're working on this gantry, you can see I've got a couple of blocks here with clamps so that it can't roll off. Uh, it'd be real easy when you're working on this for it to get away from you and go roll off on the floor and bust it up so you certainly don't want that to happen. So now that I've got the bottom piece all secure, it's just a matter of dropping that top piece in and screwing it in. And since I'm only going through three quarter inches, I can use much shorter screws. I think these are, I believe they're inch and a quarter. Yeah, it looks like they're about an inch and a quarter. So that's enough to uh, catch that top piece. So let me throw that in and we'll wrap this video up. Okay guys, just finished the uh, gantry uh, here and a couple of things I want to stress is, uh, again I can't stress enough how important it is to periodically keep checking this, make sure your pieces are perpendicular to the table, make sure you've got no daylight here between the uh, thing that should be nice and squeezed tight, nice and flush against these edges of the upright. Um, another thing is too, is when you cut this top piece, since this is the last one you put in, you know, you put the two, the front and the back rail on, then you put the bottom. When you go to put this top piece in, if it seems a little too snug, but you think, well, if I just tap it with a hammer, I can get it to go in there. Be very careful of doing that because if you do, and it's a little bit too big, it will then kick out the top of the front uh, and back rails and then you will no longer be perpendicular against here. So, you know, it will be setting, I'm exaggerating, but it will be setting kind of like that. So, you want to be careful that you don't uh, make that too wide. Uh, you know, if you have to, after you've got the bottom section in and get it all secured uh, and you've still got all this clamp tight so it's holding everything perpendicular to the table, just take a couple of pieces of scrap wood and, you know, play around with it and see, you know, find it the exact size you need because that should drop right in there and then once you screw this in, it will keep everything nice and straight. If you get it too wide, it's going to kick it out like this. If you get it too narrow, it'll probably kick it in like that, not so much at the edges because it's supported here but it will in the middle and then you'll then you'll be riding like that so you won't get some good cut so take your time you know you know the old saying measure twice cut once well you know in this case maybe measure four or five times if you have to 
but uh, the more time you take to get this part of it right, you're going to be way better off because everything will run so much smoother when you, uh, when you get that. So that's pretty much it for this one. The only thing I have left to do, and you know, again, I, I brought up the, the little block that gets glued in here. Basically, what that the, one of the main reasons for that block is not just to give this top some extra support, something to set on, but it now also gives me a double thickness here to when I'm putting my screws in to hold all this together. Because right now, when I take these clamps off, really the only thing that's holding it together is this top and the bottom. But I want to go ahead and put, you know, probably two or three screws on each side. Uh, and I'll probably aim for right in the middle of that inch and a half where I've got that, that other block. So other than that, that's, uh, that's all that's left to do with this one. So I guess I'm going to wrap this up. I don't want to make these videos too long. Plus it's got awful hot here. I'm, you know, I'm in Georgia and it's still like, you know, 80 or 90 degrees with 60, 70, 80 percent humidity. So it's, uh, you know, I, I've got a little fan on over here, but you know, if I turn a fan on, then I get people complaining about the ambient noise and stuff. So I'm trying to keep it as quiet as I can. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, and on the next video, I'll show everybody how to put the Z-axis front and rear plates on, uh, get everything lined up there. And then we'll probably just have maybe one video after that showing how to put the uh, lead screws on, how to cut those, file them, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then we'll be ready to fire this thing up. And uh, I'm anxious to uh, see this one run because just, just playing around with it just like this, it glides just so smooth. I'm really happy with this one. Uh, and I love, the, uh, I love that big old green one I've got over there. It's basically the same gantry components as this. The only difference is, is I have a steel frame table that I'm utilizing instead of building a table with this. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So I already know I'm going to really like this machine when I, when I get it finished. So anyway, I guess that's going to do it for this one. If you haven't already gotten one of these Gatton CNC kits, I don't know what the heck you're waiting for. Uh, I'm still offering free shipping in the continental U.S. as well as free shipping to uh, everybody in Canada. Um, you know, through the end of September. I, I was doing it for August and I and had good response, so I extended it through September. So if you haven't gotten your kit yet, you probably want to, uh, you know, get on the wagon here and get one of these uh, so you can build along with us. So anyway, that's going to do it, guys. I appreciate all my new subscribers. I appreciate y'all taking a minute to watch this video. If you like it, please hit the uh, thumbs up button down below. And uh, I guess that's going to do it Till next time. So we'll talk to y'all later.